is a My Froggy Stuff mashup. Our dolls are ready to express the creative side with this art mashup. From art supplies to an art classroom, we've got you covered. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. I am going to make a creative space for a doll using a recycled cereal box, cardboard, scrapbook paper, paint, fabric, clear plastic from packaging, extra paperboard, popsicle sticks or skinny sticks, and glue. I start by cutting down one side of the cereal box so it can open up. I remove the tabs at the top, cut another piece of paperboard to use as a wall extension. Using a ruler, I draw a line going all the way around the edge, making a border, cut to remove the center, glue on extra paperboard to make it stronger. I have a total of three layers. Cover the inside edges with paper, place it on top of the box, glue scrap of paper over the edge to connect the wall. Continue covering the rest of the box with paper. I chose to cover my walls with a light gray. I used a wood print on the floor and a white trim. Cut clear plastic from packaging to glue over the window. Cover strips of cardboard with paper. Cut and glue strips of paper over the plastic. Glue the cardboard around the edge. Cover extra paperboard with scrap of paper. Add an extension if needed to make the floor and finish the room. Now let's decorate. Cut skinny sticks to make the letter A. Make four. Use a long skinny stick to connect two at the top. Use a small piece to attach them together. I attach them in the middle and at the top on both sides. Cut and glue together layers of paperboard. Paint them. Glue the top onto the base. We made a chair from our doll beach house table and chair set video. Brushed it with a little paint to make a desk and chair. Cover a piece of cardboard with paper. Glue it into the box for a shelf. Make more, then glue them together to make a rectangle. Glue more cardboard inside to make a shelving unit. And when creating the furniture, I make sure to measure it so that all pieces can fit neatly inside the box. Now let's add the details. Paint the inside of small glitter jars. Make a paintbrush from our doll art classroom video for some colorful art supplies. We can use printables from our doll caddy video for bottles of paint. We use one of our dollhouse paintings as a work of art. Cut and fold seven by six inch pieces of fabric to make stacks of fabric. We can even wrap the fabric around jumbo popsicle sticks like we did for our doll general store. Make loops of embroidery floss. Wrap and glue a small piece of paper around it for doll size yarn. Take a piece of paperboard, glue on a textured piece of scrapbook paper, glue popsicle sticks around the edges, wrap ribbon around a toothpick, glue cut pieces of popsicle sticks on the end, then glue it onto the board. Glue a popsicle stick above, cut a Q-tip, punch holes on cardstock and glue them onto the ends, wrap it with thread to make miniature spools of thread. Glue on another popsicle stick to hold glitter jars of beads. Glue on cut toothpicks to hold charms and buttons that are shaped like scissors. Add a few cut pieces of fabric, cut, sand, and paint toothpicks to make pencils. Place them in a glitter jar and glue it onto the board. Attach the board to the back wall. We cut the sample pictures from a book of scrapbook paper to make doll-sized scrapbook paper. We found a pencil sharpener that is shaped like an old-fashioned sewing machine. We add a crocheted ottoman so the dolls can look out the window and think of what to create. And you're done. Happy crafting! To the midnight radio.
going to make a doll art room in a box. Using a recycled cardboard box, skinny sticks and popsicle sticks, plastic tops and lids, felt, a Q-tip, craft paint, printable scrapbook paper from our blog, scrapbook paper, as well as our printable classroom accessories. I start by removing the tabs from one side of the box. Use the other tabs to close up the other end of the box. And I'm going to cut out a portion of the top because I like a lot of light coming into our doll rooms. Use the leftover cardboard to reinforce the walls and ceiling. Cover the walls with the scrapbook paper printables or scrapbook paper from the craft store. And for our art room, we chose to use the printable bricks on top and a scrapbook paper on the bottom and wood colored scrapbook paper for the trim. We cut out our classroom printables and to make the door, it required two separate pieces. One for the bottom and another for the top. And we just trimmed the bottom off of one, then glued them together. Add a few windows, a chalkboard, and a clock. And for the chalkboard, I paint a skinny stick, glued it underneath, cut the center out of a Q-tip for chalk, cut a small piece of a skinny stick, sand away the rough edges, glue it to a piece of felt, trim off the excess to make a chalk eraser, cut the ends off of popsicle sticks, glue them together to make a bookshelf. Make books from our recycled book tutorial using leftover cardboard and old magazines or one of our printables to make books for the bookshelf. Cut and glue together pieces of cardboard, cover with paper, cut and glue together popsicle sticks, paint it, glue them to the bottom. We added another popsicle stick to help brace the legs to make a desk or workstation. Using a few ideas from our art supplies video, we make an easel, only this time we extend the legs by cutting the ends off of two popsicle sticks and gluing them together. Then used another one to cover the seam. Once complete, we glued the empty caps from our glue sticks onto the side to make a bucket to hold our toothpick paintbrushes. Create mini paintings or use the printables from our blog. Just cut them out, glue them onto a recycled box, cut them out, then decorate the room. Using a silver colored lid, cut out a circle, glue a small bottle cap into a larger one, glue the circle on top to make a pottery wheel. Add a few stools from our how to make a doll stool video. To finish it off, we use more printables on the outside of the box to make more school scenes. And you're done. Happy crafting! going to make an art gallery for a doll using a trifold, scrap of paper, recycled paperboard, extra cardboard, paper, acrylic paint, and glue. I start by cutting large rectangles from the trifold, one for the bottom and two for the sides. Cover with scrap of paper and I chose to cover the floor with a wood grain and for the walls I did brick on one side and white on the other. Then I glue on the side wall and glue the other wall in the middle, making a divided room. I make another one in reverse, so when they are pushed together, it looks like they lead into another room. So I make one more, only this time I make the wall to go all the way across, creating plenty of wall space for our art gallery. And we created a structure that can be repositioned to give the illusion of hallways and other rooms. Cut leftover strips of cardboard, glue two together to make them stronger, cover with paper, glue two squares on the ends of a rectangle to make a bench. Cut recycled paperboard, stack and glue a few together, paint it white to make canvases, where I can cut out and glue pictures from magazines or paint your own work of art and dropping paint on the canvas is a fun way to make an abstract. Use poster putty on the back to hang the artwork on the walls to display art in the gallery. And if we turn the rooms around, add the easel from our doll art room, lay a few paintings against the wall, add a few unpainted canvases, 
add a work in progress and our caddy filled with art supplies to make an art studio. Rearrange the boxes again, creating different rooms. Place the benches side by side, add covers and pillows to turn it into a bed. Add household items from previous videos to make an apartment. And you're done. Happy crafting! going to make doll art supplies using duct tape, cardboard, craft foam, popsicle sticks, q-tips, and toothpicks, and paint and markers. I start by cutting a palette out of some white craft foam. I used a hole punch to cut the circle out of the middle. Then I used a q-tip to put dabs of paint going around. But hang on to that q-tip, we're going to use it later. Then allow it to dry. Cut a piece of white foam or cardboard to use as a canvas. If I'm going to use cardboard, I usually paint it white. Paint a painting if you like. I'm going to use five popsicle sticks and a small piece of cardboard to make an easel. I start by arranging three of the popsicle sticks like this, then taking my piece of cardboard, putting some glue on it, and then gluing them all together. Take another popsicle stick and glue it to the back on an angle, then take the last popsicle stick and glue it straight across. And I may use this easel as a small tabletop for an 18 inch doll, a large one for a Barbie, or a giant one for Lilith's pet shop. To make a paintbrush, I use a toothpick and a pair of toenail clippers, and I cut it at an angle right around the middle. Color or paint the end that has the point, cut a small piece of duct tape, and then wrap it around the edge where the paint stops. And now it resembles a clean paintbrush, but for a little bit of fun, you can put a little bit of paint on the end so it looks like your doll has been painting. To make small bottles of paint, I take the Q-tips that we used earlier and I cut off the messy ends. Leaving a little bit of space at the top, I wrap a small piece of colored duct tape around the Q-tip. Trim off the excess. And now you have small bottles of craft paint. And you're done. Happy crafting! Here is a Pinterest inspired craft. Our dolls are going to show their creative side and make watercolor artwork for the dollhouse using plain white paper, a pencil, watercolors, water, recycled paperboard, cardstock, pictures for inspiration, and glue. I start by finding a picture for inspiration. I am going to use a picture of a horse because I want to make watercolor unicorns. On a plain piece of white paper, I begin to sketch the outline of the horse. And it doesn't have to be the best sketch, you just need the basic idea. For a shortcut, you can search horse outlines to trace. Place a piece of white paper over the tablet, turn out the lights so the outline shines through. Then carefully trace over it, add a unicorn horn, and now it is time to paint. Using watercolors, I begin to fill in the unicorn, staying inside the lines. Adding different colors and using water to blend them. Allow them to dry, glue them onto paperboard or cardstock. This allows me to remove any wrinkles from the paper. Cut them out, carefully erase the pencil marks, so our watercolor unicorns look like they were painted freehand. For a little extra fun, cut strips of yellow cardstock, cut them into small rectangles, then stack and glue together. Cut a piece of white paper that is slightly smaller, 
Use the watercolors to paint small ovals, glue it onto the cardstock, add a painted toothpick from our doll art class video to make a watercolor set. Then take two rectangles of recycled paperboard, stack and glue them together so it's the same on both sides. Cut and stack several layers of white cardstock, then add one rectangle of colored cardstock on top. Apply glue to the top edge, add a small piece of washi tape across the top and fold it over to the back. Sketch a picture on a small piece of paper, glue it across the front to make mini art pads for the artistic doll. And you're done. Happy crafting! you our little trick to making some awesome dollhouse paintings. What we're going to need first is a photograph. One taken by you so it's your original work and then we're going to kind of create our own paint by numbers. It's not really paint by numbers but it's kind of paint by numbers. So I guess we better go and get a photo. Yep. We just printed out our photos and we have a whole bunch that we've taken from around the neighborhood, at the park, a few old ones from the beach, and we're gonna use these photos as the template for our painting. So, which one are you gonna start with? Caspian. You're gonna do with the dog? Mm hmm. Okay. Um, personally, I think that landscapes are really easy to start with, but you're gonna go for a nice challenge by attempting to do the dog on your first one. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I'm gonna go with a landscape because they're just simpler and easy to do. I'll go with this one. Pretty simple little landscape. And this one is a little blurry, but it doesn't matter because we're doing like an impressionistic or impressionism, impressionistic? Impression, yeah. Impression, we're doing impressionism. <laughs> I took this picture while the car was moving, so it came out a little blurry, but that's okay because we're really gonna just paint right on top of it with an impressionistic type of painting, so it's not gonna matter if your printer runs out of ink or it came out blurry or the color's off because we're gonna cover it up anyway. So now let's get our colors. We have our palette and we're just gonna use good old fashioned acrylic paint. Lots of blues, lots of browns. I have some green. Yep. Maybe some gray. A little bit of white and black. More blue. Yellow. Then I just take my paintbrush and I'm gonna mix two colors. I like to do I like to do two hues of the same color. So two different shades of green. And then I'm really gonna just start going over the painting, over the colors that I see. And I'm not being overly careful about it. I'm just kind of blobbing it on.
are some of the paintings that I have done using this photo technique. And this is a painting I did of my dog. really large brush strokes on most of mine which gave them a very impressionistic kind of look. My brush strokes were kind of tiny because I wanted to make mine more realistic. Yours came out adorable. It actually looks a lot like the dog. Thank you, but it took forever. I know because in the time it took you to paint one, I did like three. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is, is this considered real painting? I'm gonna say yes, because as long as it's your original photo, you took it yourself, then you paint over it, it's your own artwork. So, did you have fun? Definitely. I had a great time, and we hope you enjoyed this technique at home. And we'll see you next time on the Frog Vlog. Thank you for joining us for this My Froggy Stuff mashup. Let us know what mashups you would like to see in the comments down below. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Follow us on Instagram at MyFroggyStuff and TheFrogBlog. And we will see you next time. Bye!